You're here because you're looking for a bunch of really simple, fun and interactive activities that you can use with an online audience that not only breaks the ice, but also builds connections too. Well, you're here in the right place and let's go. In a few seconds, I'm gonna share with you 10 of my favorite icebreaking type experiences that you can use with a virtual audience. But first, some context. It's March 2020 and the world changed. The pandemic hit us and I know my international business evaporated overnight. And then suddenly I noticed in my inbox a tsunami of emails from people all over the world, my community and many other users who were desperately looking for ideas of how they could take something they used to do face to face in person online. And while it was humbling for them to f look at me as the expert, the reality was that I had no idea how to do this either because the presumption always was, particularly for 30 or more years of my career, that groups turn up. And then suddenly with the pandemic, that was no longer true. So in the course of the next six to eight, nine months, I'd never run so many webinars, basically trialing out, taking these in-person activities and trying to make them work online. And I'm happy to say now, many years later, I have now amassed over 200 activities that are suitable or can be adapted for a virtual or online audience. And I'm gonna share all 10 of them with you right now. So here comes number one, and I'm gonna share with you 10 activities, all of which you can find the step-by-step -step instructions for for free. There's no registration, no opt-in, no credit card. So for all of these, you will find links down below in the descriptions where you can get more details about all of these 10 activities. Indeed, they're just 10 of more than 530 activities right now at this date in 2024, where you can learn more about all of the details of all of these activities and so, so much more. Here comes number one. It is called blind name tag. It's pretty simple. Again, the context is all about being online. So you're probably just staring at a camera or your screen or something of that nature. And you invite everyone to grab themselves a piece of paper or an index card, a pen. And then it's like a name tag, except it's blind. What you're inviting people to do is, and I'm gonna try and do this myself right now, but to place their name tag possibly on their head, better than on their clothing, and it'll become clear why you do that in a moment, but you put it on their head, and what they're gonna do is they're gonna write their name with a pen on that tag. So for example, uh, making sure that I hit the tag first, and then I do, and okay, that's my name tag, written blind, Ooh, not bad. <laughs> okay, looks a bit more like Mork perhaps, but it'll take only a few moments. It's a bit of fun. People can have a giggle. They can look at how, what other people did or didn't do on their name tags. Again, most of these activities have come from real in-person experiences, but we've adapted to use online. And so once everyone has done their name tag, they would then bring it nice and close so that we can see it directly in front of the camera to fill the whole screen, the whole gallery full of name tags that have been created in a blind way. Number two, oh my goodness, this is one of my favorites and you can, uh, you can go directly to Playmio and download the script for this. It's called Mr. and Mrs. Wright. And effectively, it just means everyone is, uh, switches on their videos if they choose, they don't have to, but it's certainly a lot of fun. And they look at the gallery view so you've got the gallery view, you've got hundreds if not dozens of you know, little uh, windows to people's lives. And then you as the facilitator share a story and it's about Mr. and Mrs. Wright. And here's the key. Every time you say the word right, they lean to their right hand side, then come back to equilibrium. And then when every time you say left, they all lean to the left. Now you could also do it with their hands or if they're standing, they can lean but they're gonna to move to the left and right every time they hear the words left and right. Now you can create your own story, absolutely. But if you wanna be really lazy, you can download the script directly from Playmio for Mr. and Mrs. Wright. There's a couple of scripts there once you've logged in and accessed all of that premium content, uh, but really fun. It takes about 90 seconds and the people are gonna make mistakes. They're gonna laugh, but it, it's certainly very engaging. And for someone who's not even actually playing, it's really fun to watch everyone else play it. 
you know, in front of them on the screen uh, of their computer or their mobile phone. Number three, curiosity ping pong. I learned this one from my good friend Chad Littlefield over at We and Me, and it basically works where you ask a question of the whole group, and then in the chat room, everyone writes their answer. It might be short, it might be like, what was something strange you believed as a child? Okay, so everyone writes a thing, but you tell them, do not hit enter until I say so. So give everyone 20, 30 seconds to write whatever it is they need to write. Might be their holiday destination or their favorite book or whatever. And then when you think everyone is ready, ask everyone to hit enter all at the same time. And then <laughs> it's like your inbox first thing in the morning. It just fills with emails. Ask everyone at this point to then just look over the various responses and then ask for a volunteer who's curious about what someone said. So maybe Joshua is interested in what Jasper said and said, Jasper, could you come off uh, mute and share with the rest of the group why, that tells more about that answer that you gave for that particular question. And then Jasper can choose to do that or not. If he chooses not to, then you know Joshua will go find someone else. But if Jasper does share, then J J Jasper in this case can choose somebody else that he is curious about their answer for. Now you won't do it for the whole group. You've got a 30, 50, 50, you know, whatever number of people, too many, but do it for five, six or seven of them and you'll have a little bit of an insight into your group. And here's what's interesting, it's really engaging. It can be really fun depending on your question, but it's really engaging as well because no one knows who's gonna be called upon. So if they've made a response, then they could be called upon. So they've got to continue to be engaged. Curiosity ping pong, you can see the ping pong nature of that activity. Must choose. Uh, again, an all time favorite. I could say this and, and I'm guilty as charged on all of these activities. That's why I'm sharing them with you because they work so well. But must choose. Again, get the step-by-step uh, -step instructions for free online at playmeo.com. Check the link down below. In effect, you have asked people to be on their own, perhaps, but if you've got the ability to be in multiple, um, what do they call, breakout rooms, you can do it in small groups as well. But let's say, it's, let's make it easy. Just do it as an individual. You pose a series of questions that they have to make a choice between two things, such as Coke or Pepsi, uh, video games, board games. And they need to list, maybe they pop it into the chat room, but do not hit enter. They just put down their answers into the chat room without hitting enter. And you do it five times. And then you, once you've got through the five questions, you could do a few more, but five has been my sweet spot. They hit enter, it fills the chat room. And then you ask the group, okay, you know what your five answers are? Go find someone else who has exactly the same five responses or preferences as you do. Or find someone who has as many different responses, if not all different responses to you. And it's interesting. You've got that first spark of finding something in common with somebody else. If you don't know anything about this other person, but you notice that uh, Isla happens to have exactly the same few things as you, it might give you something to make a connection for later on in a conversation if you happen to be working with them later on. It's called must choose. There's also another variation called this or that. You could check that one out as well. I learned this next activity from a good friend and colleague, Michelle Cummings in the United States. It's called Dice Breakers. I don't know if she came up with it, it doesn't matter. Here's how it works, is that on the screen, already in advance, you have prepared a set of six questions or 12 questions. Simple, non-threatening, fun type icebreaker questions. If you're looking for some ideas for that, again, head along to playmeo.com for that purpose. And then either you're armed with a couple of dice or you use some sort of uh, electronic counter in the corner that you can press the button for and it automatically um, you know, turns the dice. And at some point it will show a number. If you're using one dice, it's one to six. If you're using two, it's gonna be from two to 12. And then you find the question that matches the number on the dice. So let's say, okay, it's your turn now, um, Jessica. So Jessica, we roll the dice, oh, eight. And she's invited to answer question number eight. It's random. You don't know what number it's gonna be rolled. And then of course, Jessica can then roll the dice to indi indicate for the next person to answer the next question. Called dice breakers, very simple. And again, you could use that same technique for something other than an icebreaker too, where you might determine a certain task that needs to be complete. But let's keep it within icebreakers for now. That's called icebreakers. The next one is called panic 
picture. Again, I've picked up this activity from my friend Chad Littlefield. He has a set of cards. You do not need to use these, but they're just so beautiful for that purpose. They're called We Engage cards. On one side, you've got an image and on the other side, you've got a quote. And the way it works is that you have a set of images. I don't know if I've got these up the right way, but you've got a set of images. You're showing it to the camera. Everyone can see it on speaker view on their side and everyone's got their microphone off, uh, on so that everyone can be heard. And here's what you say is that I'm going to show you one picture about every 20 seconds. And the first person who is triggered a memory that can involve something about that image in a story, I invite you to share with the rest of the group. So this first one is what looks like uh, the front dashboard and steering wheel of a very old car. And maybe that triggers a memory of you when you were a kid working in grandpa's shed and you had something that looked a bit like this. And so it's panic picture because you know in 20 seconds time, the next image comes. And then 20 seconds later, the next image comes. It builds energy. And what you'll find in the beginning is that it's a bit slow, but as they realize there's a bit of pace and there's nothing to lose by sharing a story, they will pick up and in fact, will probably compete for space to be able to share a story. It's about generating energy. It's about inviting people to share. And that's how you build those commonalities. A great icebreaker, uh, whether it's in person, but particularly online. This next activity is called, Are You More Like? On the screen, you will have set up in advance, just maybe this continuum of an arrow that points to the left and points to the right. And at each end, you have something that is a continuum. You might have at one end a cat and the other end a dog, or you might have a swing and a slide or domestic, international. And what you're asking people to do is to place, like use the annotate tool and stamp somewhere on the spectrum on their screen where they are more like. Are they more like a cat? Now, it's not that you like cats, but are you more like a cat? Like think of the characteristics of a cat or are you more like a dog? So you might love dogs, but you might consider yourself to be more like a dog. There is again, hundreds and hundreds of different ways you can invite people to consider what are they more like? And again, you're looking for commonality. You might discover that everyone else is more like a cat and you're the only person that is more like a dog. That might open up a conversation around, oh, what is it about a dog that you think you're more like? And what is it about the cats that this group thinks they're more like cats? It sparks a conversation. Okay, we're into our last three. This next one is a classic, used it probably hundreds of times now at this point after the pandemic. It's called ID numbers. You and I, we both have many, many things in our lives that are identified with a number, a bank account, a mobile phone, a street address, all that sort of stuff, social security number, credit cards, and so forth. This one, this activity invites everyone to create their own identity number, their own identity number. So it starts by, first of all, just writing their name at the top. That's pretty simple. Write your name at the top, but then at the bottom of it, I'm going to ask people to write a series of numbers. So for example, I might put these numbers down. So I've just written this down now. So in this case, I've got 64, 19, 1 and 13. These numbers represent something about me that reveals something about me that I'm obviously willing to share because here's how it works is that I'll ask for a volunteer online to come off mic, uh, to come off mute and be on mic and show us their card like full screen so everyone can see it. And then the rest of the group, either on the chat room or if you've got a small enough group, ask them to come off uh, mute and guess what each of these numbers might represent. So I'm wondering what you might think 64, 19, 1 and 13 are. In the comments below, have your best guess. At some point, I will add my answers, so you'll need to go through uh, the comments to find them. But uh, 64, 19, 1 and 13 are all unique things about me. So for example, I'll give you one of them. 19, that is how many years I owned a particular car before it finally died and I gave it up and purchased another car. That says something about me, is that I hang on to things and really value them and look after them. So. Again, so many different things and numbers that you could use and a great way to get a bit of an insight into somebody else. Five clues is the name of the game and that's actually an instruction for you to create a list of sets of five clues about people in your group. So if you know your group a little bit, maybe they're your workplace or they're your students, you know something about this group. So 
Secretly identify one person and draw a list of clues about that person. So it might be that they are male, that they uh, have dark hair, they come they were born overseas, they can speak four languages, uh, they presented on a particular topic, and so on and so on and so on. There are lots of different clues that you would give. Now it starts with the first clue, and then in the chat box, or again, small group, just get them off mic, get them on mic, uh, they would make their guesses. But the thing is, once they guess, they're eliminated. They can't just keep guessing to eliminate the choices. They get one guess per person, so if they want to, they can wait for all the clues to be revealed before they have their guess. Or if they really think they know it early on, they can get in there early and hopefully earn the points. It's called five clues. It takes a bit of prep up front, but you know, it's something that's really fun and unique that you might know about some of the people in your group and then you know, mold that into the activity. Which brings us to our last activity. Most of us don't think we're particularly good at drawing. And in fact, if you ask any group of grade two or second grade students and you said, put up your hand if you're an artist, every kid would put their hand up. But by the time they get to seventh grade, no one puts their hand up anymore. Something about our creativity is dampened because we think that we're not particularly good. Well, this leverages that thought and just throws it out the window. It's called blind portraits. Everyone starts with a piece of paper and a pen in front of them on the desk. And then you would switch to, and in the case of your participants, they switch to speak of you. So all they can see on the screen is you, but you as the facilitator have the gallery view. And their instruction is to look at the screen and never at their paper and do the best drawing or portrait of you, head and shoulders, on the piece of paper without ever looking at the paper. They've got 30 seconds. So they're gonna be doing this, trying their best at drawing you without ever looking at their paper. Now it goes for about 30 seconds. Now while that's happening, I'm also drawing, but a secret person in my group. Remember, I've, I've got the gallery view. So I've chosen one person, I'm drawing them. 30 seconds is up, they all have a look at what they've done, there's a good giggle, and then I ask them to fill the screen with their particular uh, drawing. And then we get to have a look at all of that and again have a good giggle. And then I show them my illustration, my portrait. And then in the chat room or small enough group, they can all just go off mute. They can then say, okay, who do you think I drew? And so they have to try and guess who that person is. Now it's not an art class, it's just about engaging them, having a bit of fun, and also learning a little bit about each other as we go through, which is why icebreakers are so effective when they're done well and crafted carefully in a sequence is that they can be non-threatening, highly interactive, but fun and simple activities that help build relationships. And that's what all of these 10 activities will do for you. Again, a reminder, you can get all the step-by-step -step instructions for these completely free at playmare.com. All of the links are downstairs in the descriptions below this video. So now it's my invitation to you. What resonated in this video? What ideas do you have that are your favorite icebreakers? Now this is free video. It's completely free for you to digest and, and play with and try out. But it's a bit like the price of admission. What I'd really love to know is what resonated for you in this episode or what is an idea that you've got that you've used in a virtual context that has helped break the ice with the groups that you work with? So please just add a comment down below in the comments there and I will always, always, always respond. There's no doubt I'm gonna beg, steal and borrow what you've shared, but it also adds to the collective wisdom of our community as well. And then finally, um, if you loved what we've just done here, these were just 10 activities. There are over 530 right now, indeed probably even more by the time you see this video, that you can get access to in icebreakers, energizers, team building and trust building exercises. So check it out, it's playmeo.com. You can start a free trial for seven days. You'll unlock everything, completely free, premium content um, that won't cost you a cent. And if you like what you see, that by all means you can upgrade to a premium. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. It really means a lot to me and all I wish for you is to have fun out there. All the best.